1941 with Prime Minister Churchill, his was like a voice out of darkness promising light. The Atlantic Charter, it was a promise, it was a call to arms, it was a call to freedom. And the enemy struck at America, a day that will live in infamy. And in the cause of freedom, he offered himself for a fourth term. Like most men of my age, I had made plans for myself, plans for a private life of my own choice. But today, all private plans, all private lives have been, in a sense, repealed by an overriding public danger. Those are the reasons why I have had to admit to myself and now state to you that my conscience will not let me turn my back upon a call to service. I will, with God's help, continue to serve with the best of my ability and with the fullness of my strength. And the people of America stood behind him. He and the new Vice President, Truman, in January of 1945, went back to Washington. Truman of Missouri, a brave and honest man, a supporter of Roosevelt's policy for 11 years, here shown with his family at the time of his election to the vice presidency. It is he who in this, his country's grievous hour, has pledged himself in his first utterance as president, sure president to abide by the principles of his great predecessor. President Roosevelt, unknown even to himself, was already near death in the service of his country. But two months before his death, he made his last and greatest journey to Yalta in the Russian Crimea, there to plan, there to devise with his most powerful peers the peace, the unity, the human hope of plain men everywhere, which was the goal and desire of all his labors. We shall labor on. For him, it is over. He no longer belongs to America. He belongs to the world.